Hello, it's now been about 24 hours since we discovered that the praying mantises had hatched out of their egg case. So I wanted to make a video this time talking about them and about their care so far. There is already a previous video of just them walking around. It's actually set to music and there's no narration, so you can find that video as well if that is what you prefer. This one though is going to be about me talking about them and about the care that they have gotten thus far. This is the first time I have ever hatched praying mantises. So I'm completely new to all of this. Those of you who have done it before may have suggestions and that would be excellent. So to tell you a little bit about them, they are Chinese mantises. So this is the mantis we commonly see in my part of the world. I live in Ohio in the Midwestern US and we do have native mantises, but the introduced Chinese mantis is far more common and by now it's actually considered naturalized because it's been here for so long and it's considered um, a pretty established part of our native fauna. So last fall I had the mother of these mantises. Her name was Katana and she was gravid or pregnant at the time and I knew that and I wanted to wait until she produced her egg case. Unfortunately their life cycle is such that after they do so they usually die pretty quickly. I tried to keep her alive but it just wasn't her life cycle to do so. So she did pass away soon after producing her egg case. And here, if you can see it, is her egg case itself. So it actually came out looking like foam and I had a video of her producing the egg case, which I was lucky to actually witness, so that was pretty awesome. And after producing it, it hardened. Now it kind of feels like styrofoam, and it was originally hanging from the top of a mesh cage, the kind of cage that people keep butterflies in, and they also work well for spiders and mantises, but they wouldn't work well for little mantises, so when the egg case was produced, I first kept it outside for a number of months so that they wouldn't hatch prematurely. But when I discovered that there is an available food source at the local pet store, I decided to go ahead and try hatching them. So I then removed the egg case from the mesh cage and I placed it in this jam jar. Now, the, of course, there is an issue with that, which I later discovered after reading about it, that it should be suspended or hung uh, in the manner in which it had been attached because gravity helps the young mantises to emerge. Now, as far as I can tell, everyone did successfully emerge except for one. There is one um, dead little mantis that is, um, is hanging out right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's on the top. Unfortunately, focusing is not very easy, even in the brightest room in the house, which is where I am right now. Happens to be the bathroom. So anyway, I placed it in the jam jar indoors and it hatched and pretty quickly, but not as quickly as I'd expected. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I brought it in in the, I guess, late winter, very early spring. Now it's early April and they have emerged. So here is the ready food source that I discovered. They are available at PetSmart. They are little fruit fly colonies. They're quite small and they can be fed to other tiny little creatures as well. So basically in the bottom is this medium. I don't know what it is yet, but you can see that little maggots of fruit flies are hanging out in there. The adults, once they take their adult form, tend to congregate at the top of the tube, whereupon they can easily be removed and then transferred to your animal cage. Now, these guys are flightless fruit flies, so they don't actually fly, and that's how it's not an issue with them getting into your fruit and so on, like regular fruit flies, but they do hop and they scurry very quickly, as I have discovered. So they're not super easy to wrangle if they happen to get loose. 
This morning, actually, I had a mishap because I thought to remove the jam jar, this one here, from this little uh, cage that the mantises are currently in, and I thought to try putting in a plant to give them something to climb on in the middle, and also I added some soil with springtails in it because I read that springtails are a good first food source for very small mantises. In so doing, I try to do it as quickly as possible, only lifting up the corner of the top of the cage, but mantises and the fruit flies came streaming out and I spent over an hour trying to collect them from the bathroom counter. I'm sure that I didn't get them all, but I really did my very, very best. Now I have invested in a product, which you may laugh at, but hopefully it will be very effective. It is a bug vacuum. We sell them at the Nature Center where I work. They're also available, I'm sure, online and in lots of other places. And they're mostly a kid's toy, but they are able to provide suction of low or high intensity. And you can suck an insect then into this little container. They've also got little attachments to the vacuum. So if you need to use a tube or something to get into a hard to reach space, it's got that as well. I haven't gotten to try it out yet because I discovered that on the bottom is a thing you need to unscrew. And unfortunately we can't find our screwdrivers because we recently moved and everything is all over the place. So hopefully soon, because if these guys get out again, it's gonna be an issue all over again. But I'm actually not going to be opening this up anytime soon. I did go ahead and give it a very thorough misting already. So what I mean by misting, if you don't know, is to use one of these spray bottles right here. And they produce a fine mist. That mist then collects on the walls and on the substrate or bedding for the mantises to eat, or drink rather, and they actually do. Because I was able to observe them right away, they seemed rather thirsty, and they did go ahead and have a drink. Now, you may be wondering about the kind of container that they are in. This is the little plastic containers. I call them critter keepers for some reason. I think they used to be called that long ago when I worked in the pet trade, and uh, for some reason that's just the name that stuck. But they're your little plastic cages that you can put very small creatures in, or larger ones for temporary transport. And underneath, I did put two layers of cling saran wrap. I then, of course, poked air holes with a thumbtack. And it seems to be pretty good as far as air circulation. Initially, there was a lot of condensation forming on the inside, and I got really worried that it's because the airflow wasn't good. But I think that was actually because it's a really cold day outside, and in transport, um, these guys maybe got a bit... Um, well, they were warm on the inside, and it was cold on the outside, and I think that the temperature differential is what caused that. So, uh, anyway, we had no further issues there, so that is good. And I did put also a little piece of pear in for the fruit flies that are already in here. Now, the mantises themselves have not uh, tried to hunt the fruit flies yet. They pretty much um, prefer to remain still, but if there is activity, they will scamper away from it. They'll actually run from the fruit flies, and they'll run from each other. Occasionally, though, they pounce on each other, and, um, and then they quickly scurry away in opposite directions. So I know that cannibalism is an issue with these guys, but as they're not even eating the fruit flies or the springtails, I don't think that that will be a concern just yet. Hopefully, we shall see. As for the quantity of baby mantises in here, we've definitely got at least 150. I did start counting the ones just on the walls, and that's what I got to at that given time. Of course, there are many in the substrate as well, not in, but walking upon. There are also a lot of fruit flies walking on the substrate, which is uh, essentially, it, it's, um, it's a kind of reptile substrate. It's made with peat moss and I think it was fir bark, the bark of fir trees. So that is what the substrate is as well. So a friend of mine asked me to provide something for scale, but I don't think it's within reach now. I'm gonna set this down 
and get the item if I can. Okay, reach behind you. I've had to kind of set up a little little stage here because the lighting is really not so good and I've had to put a piece of paper behind the mantises to show them. I'm going to go out tomorrow once it uh, warms up a bit and I can probably get some better pictures of them. But here is my item for scale. It is a pencil and they are about as long as a pencil eraser is wide. So, I don't know if that helps. I feel like it doesn't, but uh, but there they are. And here's a pencil lead, you can see it. Now, I will get a little bit closer, so you can hopefully see the mantises more clearly. Each one of those things that you see is, of course, a mantis. I took them to a school today, and at first all the kids said, well, I don't see anything, I don't see any. And, and then they're like, oh my gosh, all those things are the mantises. So yeah, you really have to focus on the things that look like a little piece of bedding that got stuck to the wall of the cage. Those are the mantises. And in some cases, they are the fruit flies. So I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit and see if I can show them a little better to you. I have an issue, of course, with the focus when you've got such tiny subjects. And it's going to be too dark at the moment to show them in the substrate. Just the ones on the walls. Alright, so there they are, and that is my video on the first things I have done for the mantises. And tomorrow I will try to get some more photos or video outside where the lighting will be a bit more natural. You can probably see them a little bit better. Alright, well thank you for watching. And again, if you have successfully raised hatchling mantises and have any suggestions, feel free, of course, to post those.